突然觉得讨论跟嗯分析。跟分享，然后接下来就会是小组的时间，大我然后不会是针对我们小组个人的，就是自己的，其实就是大家一起分享、一起讨论在同质性伦理这一个部分。Yeah, what she said. Right. <laughs> 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 Two feminists, uh, Margaret Farley and also Mary Hunt. So I will talk about Farley, while Lai Chan will talk about uh, Hunt. So what, what what are we talking about here? Uh, first of all. What is the issue? I think for many of us who are queer, there is this idea that having same-sex attractions, having same-sex feelings and expressions, are by default are automatically abnormal and, by extension, sinful and unethical. Right. So if you're queer, there's something wrong with you. Uh, that's what most mainline churches tell us. Okay. And because of that, whatever we do becomes wrong. You know, as an out gay man myself, I'm constantly struggling with the idea that no matter what I do, it is always wrong because I'm I'm already gay. So anything I do is gay. You know, even my toothbrush, <laughs> even picking up the toothbrush and you know using toothpaste, it's a gay toothbrush. <laughs> anything I do, if I see a man, my heart goes bop 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 bop. It's wrong. My heart is a gay heart. <laughs> Really talking about what are the consequences from that when we told that we are normal and sinful? So some consequences would be we don't have a lot of support from our pastors, right, from our church friends. Everybody wants to help us to repent, bring us to the right path. If you, if you believe in God enough, if you really have faith, you can change. And we try, we try, we try. You know, I remember、uh, one friend was telling me that his his priest told him to rub holy oil on his penis. <laughs> He ended up, he ended up with a pickled penis. He was gay.、Um, and we don't have directions, no directions for sexual ethics. How can we live ethically, right, as queer people? And there's a lot of internalized homophobia, biphobia, transphobia, and we go with disruptive sexual behaviors because we don't have those guidelines. Oh, you have to trust us. So we do need a framework, you know, for Christian sexual ethics for LGBTIQ people.、Um, so what are Christian sexual ethics and wholeness? What does it mean to be、uh, to, to be sexually ethical, to be whole? And we would like to hear your ideas、um, over the course of this workshop. Your idea of what it means to be sexually ethical as a Christian, and what does it mean for you to be whole? What does it mean for us to be whole? And having said, having talked about wholeness, I think we need to be realistic and say that. I, well, let me be realistic and say that I don't think that I can ever be completely whole. Um, I, can, I don't think I'll ever be that perfect sexual human being that I want to be, and that's okay. I think the journey is more important than the arrival.、Um, yeah. Do you maybe? Yeah. Just very quick. Also, what is that? 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 刚刚说我们我们在人生当中要怎么样成为一个真正完全一个完完美圆满的人？真的有这么一天吗？那还是说这其实是一个过程？这是这是我们人生当中一直的追求。<笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑>
move on to Margaret Farley, who is Margaret Farley? So she provides a way of thinking about sexual ethics that a lot of people don't agree with. No. Margaret Farley is a Roman Catholic nun. Yeah! You get, you get the weight of that statement. She's a Roman Catholic nun. And she wrote this book called Just Love. And she said, what if, you know, the way that Roman Catholics have always thought about a particular way of ethics is not really very useful. Maybe it's another way. Of course, the Vatican banned her book and the sales went through the roof. <laughs> So, what I want to say is, what is an alternative way of understanding Christian sexual ethics that we can look at today? So maybe you can just interpret this part and say that Margaret Farley is a nun. <laughs> Do we really need interpretation of <laughs> <laughs> Okay. There are seven characteristics that she says defines sexual ethics. That define, sorry. There are seven characteristics that define sexual ethics regardless of whether somebody is straight or queer. And that's where, you know, we are on the same journey. And she says there are some things that we have traditionally understood and held as ethical and unethical that may not necessarily be correct. And she says, you know, she's sort of saying that it's not what you do that makes it ethical. It's the principle behind it that determines if it's ethical or unethical. <laughs> Yeah, so it's, 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 it's the principle. And she says there are seven things that you need to look at, and you ask yourself based on these seven principles. You know, what I'm doing now in terms of sex, does it bear these seven characteristics? So number one, she says, Whatever kind of sex you engage in, it must not it must not do any unjust harm. Okay? So it must not be destructive. That's number one. So when you think about it, it really doesn't matter if it's straight sex or if it's queer sex or anything in between. You know, um, does it cause harm to yourself? Or does it cause harm to another person? And, and, and having said that, you know, I think it's important to ask ourselves, like a lot of us here, I mean let's be realistic. Like, a lot of us here hook up for anonymous sex. Let's not try to pretend that no, we don't. We do. We do. We will. Okay, some of us don't. That's fine too. I do. That's fine. Uh, I'm not saying so, but you know, we are automatically told that if you hook up for anonymous sex, it's wrong. When you look at these principles, you're not asking that. You're asking when I hook up. Am I hooking up the right way or the wrong way? <laughs> no, I'm not talking about positions. Can I? Please? For example, when I hook up, can I treat that person with respect, or I treat, do I treat that person simply as a sexual object? Because if we treat another person as a sexual object, that is harm. When we allow ourselves to be treated as sexual objects and not to be respected, that is also harmful. So you see how the conversation changes. We're no longer saying, hooking up is wrong, hooking up is not right, or it's right, it's not right. I say, what's behind, you know, the principle, what's the principle behind hooking up? Number two, is there consent? Or do we force? Do we force people to have sex with us? Um, is, is, there, is there mutual consent? And that goes to number three. Is it, is it mutual? Do we, do we agree? Or is it a sort of arrangement when um, there is a power imbalance, you know, for example, if I am a lecturer, let's pretend I'm a lecturer, um, and I have a student. <laughs> I think what? Okay, so let's say um, I'm a lecturer, and I have a student, and the, I use my power to get the student to have sex with me, and say, if you don't, you will fail. That is harmful. So there is no mutuality there. 
But if it's between consenting adults, that's a different matter altogether. Number four is the equality. Again, the same thing. It's the power imbalance. Number five is the commitment. For Margaret Farley, she says that uh, same-sex couples, if they have a sense of commitment, it is it is good, and it is every bit as good as a straight sex. That's when I, I I sort of differ from Margaret Farley. For me, even anonymous sex sometimes can be good because there is a short-term commitment. We commit ourselves to each other for I don't know how long we go for. <laughs> The average roll in the hay is 30 minutes, I say. For 30 minutes, maybe just for that period of time, our attention is focused to each other. And maybe there are three of us. Right? So, <laughs> so let's say that more than a few of us, just for that time, it's just us. So I, I'm arguing that maybe even in those sorts of situations that are rather bizarre, but it's very delightful, um, perhaps there is that short-term commitment. There is fruitfulness, you know. If we show respect for each other, and we are still friends during sex and after sex, maybe there's some, something there. This, we have, the friendship is a form of fruitfulness. Right? And then social justice. Um, how do we continue to respect each other as sexual beings within society? When we look at each other, when I look across this room, can I see you as persons, as sexual persons that are deserving of respect rather than just potential ladies? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>就是不要是傻會傷害到彼此的就是沒有理然後第二點是大家是今天只有碰到一件就是一面之緣然後你們之間就是覺得可以發生關係然後你們彼此同意這樣然後這也算是一種互惠可是就是不要扯另外一方是受到覺得自己是被壓迫大概總結的起點是這樣 was beautiful <笑><笑> So you can see the shift Sorry Benjamin This is what you said that when we treat each other as sex objects we actually do it harm but you know, with hookups, people are just going for sex, right? So they are going for the other person for sex, and they know that the other person is coming to us for sex. So what's wrong with that? Uh, there's a Q and A. Maybe maybe after Lyshan's. Uh, um, keep keep the questions. Please keep the questions. Some something something not gonna cranny. Yeah, please keep the questions. No, but it's a good question. It's a very good question. And I think what um, I'll give an example. We have a handout here, and the handout one of the handouts is actually from something that I wrote based on my interview with a gay man who said that he will not treat people the way he was treated. There was a situation where. He hooked up with a guy, and after the guy had his orgasm, we all know what an orgasm is, right? Yeah. Um, some of us have never experienced it. That's why <laughs> most of us have. So after the guy had his orgasm, he kicked this guy out. So that's when the objectification happens. So what I'm saying is not so much that we don't. I mean, yeah, definitely when I hook up, you know, I'm not interested in your history. I just want you for now. But that's not the objectification that I think Farley is talking about. She's talking about how the respect before, during, and after for the person as a person must be present throughout. That's what she's going to say. Okay, uh, actually I just answered that, didn't I? Okay, sorry. Um, so we're looking at how the conversation has shifted. Um, so we're moving away. Um, maybe you can uh, interpret that later. Moving for, we are moving away from talking about something that is abnormal, 
to practicing justice and love. We're moving away from saying that this is sin to oh, maybe there could be potential for wholeness and sacredness. We're moving away, and the third bullet, uh, number three is the most important one. We're moving away from being to doing. That while we are accused of being abnormal and deviant and sinful simply for being LGBTIQ, now we are shifting the conversation and saying no, being LGBTIQ is not sinful or deviant. It's what we do as LGBTIQ people that makes it sinful or, or, or deviant. It's not who we are, but what we do that makes an action wrong or right. Okay, so just to summarize. Oh, sorry, sorry. Okay. LGBTIQ主群做了什么样的行为 尽量的不要去想说这个是你们正常的事情，然后他是把它往这个是说，把它把它想的是做正义和爱的方式来对待自己还有别人，然后第二个是说不要去就是说一直想着这是一个罪，但是可以去试着去想说有没有一个可能性
你觉得他们的传统的话，就是就是以男生为主？嗯，还没开始到。<笑><笑>我我只是说那个，用那个妇妇女去举举例那个放出来做轮椅的时候，通常我们开始的时候就是对那个呃取景做一个分析，配分的分分析发型开始的。OK， so I come to 呃，去去 actually look at the very traditional 呃。Ethics. The tradition is mainly sexual teachings are decided by male celibate men. So the indication is that it needs women's moral agency in deciding what is moral about sexuality, and it's also mainly just about the domestic role of women. That means how to mother. So it has an implication for LGBTQ people as well. It has no say, right? No moral agency. Because of what? Because our sex is like non-procreative. It's only about sexual pressure. It's only about <coughs> your own self-interest. So it becomes from the point of view of male self-interest. 他们主要谈的就是男性，然后男性能够禁欲，就是禁欲这件事情。然后女性的角度，在这个讲这件事情的时候，都会都会没有这件事情。所以感觉上女生的角度就好像只是只是帮着就是家里的，针对在家的女人啊，然后在帮助她。所以这同时也可以去想象到我们 LGBT 在这些谈这些宗教上是有有有什么样的角色？对对对，因为我们呃说的 LGBT。的性都性都是，呃，只有性宽远，没有其他的。在在一个传统来说，我们就是没有深深入的，所以就是这样。没有基，没有那个基，是一个谈性。但是。而且这个重点是因为那个天主教的那个信仰传统是由小独生的男生来决定，那所以他做这个是就跟翻译的人生一样，就是他没有女人的角度。好，好，嗯，哎，谢谢。嗯，对，那个是呃，对那个过那个秀都生活的的人，所以他们对性很多的话，呃，要那。Okay. So the second trend, the second trend we see is the widespread of HIV/AIDS issue. So this is a concern to address this issue in sexual ethics. The third one is about globalization. So sex is available and cheaply sold everywhere in the world once you have money. Is it the same also in the LGBTQ communities? In actually, throughout the whole history of sexuality, sex. Sex is served. Sex is used to serve the pleasure of male or the privileged class. In, in globalization, also another issue I want to add is about the Christian right ideology and agenda, right? Especially in Asia, you can see it now. It it, it is used to oppress LGBTQ people. 所以第二点是说，是谈说，等一下会谈到的，爱滋就是其实是普遍的存在。然后第三是说，就是在全球化一个状况，其实女生，尤其是性上面上会被用来作为一种，像商品，就是大家可以去买性的一个服务，然后然后好像就会有点廉价，然后也不是那么的，就是它也都没有被控制，然后大家就是。对这件事情，就是好像都也没有比较正确的去看待。我我我在意的就是那个在那个统计就是呃全呃全台全体也也可以可能出现这个情况。嗯、我们都要需要关注。还有那个宗教右派的情况，通过全球化已经影响我们亚洲的地区。嗯<咳>所以，嗯，现在，如果我们讲到性别议题和性别议题，我们不能只讲一个宗教传统，我们
I think we all know in Asian context, we have to address like a multi-religious context. And the fourth one is about, oh no, fifth one, they'll be, okay, from the woman's experience, sexuality is not always something about just fun and pleasure. It's about abuse. Actually, we can also think about in the LGBT community, is abusive, coercive relationship exist? Okay. So the sixth trend: women's sexuality is misconstrued in high-risk individualistic terms. For example, the issue of abortion. We only see it's like a, a fight between the fetus and the mother, and ignore the whole complex socio-political and economic issues on solving abortion. So another trend, some other thing that is the pharmaceutical companies and the industry actually bolster the intimacy of high rate of sexual pleasure and shape the consumption of new reproductive technologies and the construction of women. And other, this is another um, yellow news that uh, observe this trend. And we can also ask how the commercial culture industry actually shape the construction of family and the understanding of highly sexual pressure. So you, you can see, some people will say, what happens in our bed or on our bed? Why you have to interfere with us, right? We have to think that it's a private issue, right? We, we, can, we don't need to talk about any justice if it is only your private issues. And all that for other examples, we cannot talk about sex only in private issues. For example, during when you, the United States is at war, it's very um, much a super masculinity is promoted in society. The implication is that it just stigmatizes and demonizes gay men as a man. So all these global or all these uh, like uh, macro issues actually shape or affect how we understand sexuality. So that's why when we talk about sexual ethics, we want to turn ethics have a very strong connotation about justice. How we link all these issues is linked from your personal private linking to the societal political issues. So her proposal, according to this, her proposal is about <laughs>所以我觉得他刚刚最后的那句话写比较他有提到就是说财务上的一些问题新的快感所以它其实也整个改变了我们对这些
或者那个工业那个那个消费的文化，怎么一样？因为我们想那个性就是非常个人的事事情，你大家不要玩我在房里做什么，哪里就没有工工工地可以谈，就是这个这个呃想法的时候。So her proposal, just for sex, is a basic human right. Because she wants to change the discussion of being sexuality with a public communal approach. We can talk about it. It's not just about your private individual attention. Because it's about our common human life, our common good, about right relationships. So this is a right to sex that is safe, pleasurable, community building, conducive to justice. Linking the body and spirit. Um, he, 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 So what is uh talk when we talk about safe sex? It's not just about condom. It's also about other things. Uh, free from abuse or coercive sex. Of course, uh, free from HIV AIDS. Respect the gender of a partner. Freedom to be alone. Just be sexual but alone. Can Pleasurable. Um, if you want to have pleasurable, pleasurable sex, actually we need to be responsible for it. You have to create yourself and for your partner. So pleasurable is linked to responsibility. But enjoy responsible sex means also erotically fulfilling and physically satisfying. <laughs> Responsible 就是啊，就是要有责任，要有责任的关系。但是我喜欢他现在这个，他说是非常的，呃，他挺是激情，就是你要要非常的爽。
课，是讲说我们对性这件事情啊，应该有更加的 critical 的这个想法来看，批判的想法来看，就是说把它扩大成是一个整个，就是扩大到社会的一个。呃，对，社会的一个框架上来看这个，看这个人类的这个这个性性的这件事情，然后呢，呃，我们能够来去呃，就是找出不同的地方，找出不同的意见的地方差异，然后并且来分析，就是说这些关系里面哪到底哪些地方是不一样，然后进而能够去找到一个共同的价值。谢谢，张老师。
To think about your own country context. <laughs> what happened in your country? There are, are there specific issues or context you need to digest in talking about these principles? <laughs>